Michael in the building. All right, man. So um, <laughs> you reached out to me. You said you have a, a, a story to tell of your uh, experience with uh, the company Hale. That's H-E-Y-L, right? Yes, sir. That's correct. That's All right. All right. So I, I, I made a... I made a I made a make the call video on them. I I think it was like what last year I think I I, I can't keep up with them, but uh, but you yeah. commented on that video and you wanted to uh, you you wanted to come and 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 tell your experience. Now, how long you was with the company uh, before you actually left? I, I was with them uh, three months uh, to be exact. All right, so three, so three months time. So guys, this is this young man's experience to what happened to him with uh, hell. So Mike, man, um, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, let us hear your story. Hi, uh, my, yes, my name is uh, Michael Pearson. Uh, actually, I've had a CDL since 2015. Uh, I've actually spent a couple of years in safety uh, with a major carrier. And I was also a trainer um, for a long time, and um, you know, and I just decided to make you know career changes. And Hyle appeared uh, at first to you know offer some good opportunities. But first and foremost, I just wanted to say that I'm, my purpose is not to um, drag anyone through the mud or, or acting like a just an employee. My thing is I have a lot of respect for my fellow drivers, and I want y'all to be just, just listen to my experience, and so you can make an informed decision if you decide you want to go work for this company. Because what I'm coming to find out, especially these days, uh, so especially with drivers, driver turnover, a lot of these companies are running drivers, basically getting you in there, and you know use you up and uh, not deliver on what they promised, and they don't care if you go and find another job or not. Uh, and that's uh, pretty unfortunate. Well, if anyway. Um, I started working with Howard when they, you know, they paid, started out paid 56 cents per mile, uh, anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 miles a week. But for Howard, in my experience, I was struggling just to get to 2,500 miles a week, if, if that, maybe 2,000, 2,100 miles, because I was actually looking over uh, some of my settlements uh, from Howell. And I brought this to the management's attention. I'm like, look, you know, guys, I, I got a family. Uh, I have to take care of my diet, and this is, I have a certain range that I need to be in, 2,500 miles a week or better. Uh, they're like, oh, yeah, just be patient with us. We'll get you there. We'll get you there. But after a while, I, well, that, that never happened. And also, too, well, they promised a lot of dropping hook opportunities and was supposed to make your, your time as a driver more productive. However, I found myself a lot of live loading and unloading, and sometimes you get to some of these shippers they take a, especially if you have to have a lumper uh they take a very long time uh to get you uh, unloaded and i was there one uh one consignee i was there for almost six hours and the following week i was, I was they sent me back to the same consignee i was there another uh six hours okay anyway i, I was, I was uh, a texas original driver so I basically I, I ran wherever they wanted me to run and um, I'm in the. I was in the process of uh, moving to Ohio uh, because my wife she graduated uh, medical school. She was going to do a residency up in uh, uh, Dayton, Ohio. And I, even though I still tried to give Kyle a chance, I was like, "Oh, hey guys, I'm moving to Ohio. What kind of opportunities do you have that way?" And they were upfront and told me that, "Hey, we don't really have a whole lot of opportunities. Uh, the best they can probably offer me is uh, over the road, and I'm out 10 to 14 days." Uh, at a time, uh, and they were like, we can barely feed the drivers we got in that area now. I'm like, okay, well, so, hey, I had to do what I had to do and look for other opportunities. Um, and I accepted uh, an offer with a company out of Ohio, which uh, which so far I'm impressed with. Um, anyway, uh, I, I I went, I gave uh, Ohio the professional courtesy of a uh, two-week notice, actually a little, a little over, almost three-week notice, Okay, I sent it in on that Sunday, uh, letting them know that hey, I'm gonna resign. Hey, I wish you all the best, but I'm just gonna try 
you know, look out for got to do his best for me and my family. Um, I sent in on that Sunday, and by that m- Monday, Tuesday, m- now Tuesday morning, they were like, uh, well, hey, we need you to go and clean out your truck. And, uh, uh, Five hundred. Who do you think we are, baggage handlers? The going rate on a boat is a thousand a night, man. Do you know that? Uh, come, we want you to drive four hours down into the South Texas to bring the truck back, and we'll we'll give you a ride back with a driver. Now, I was taken aback by that because one of the th- things that Heil kind of advertises in their their commercials is that they're family driven. However, uh, in, I gave you professional courtesy, and and you made a, a decision, but basically to kind of uh, they really have any regard for me or my family, and I think that's kind of kind of laughable. And granted, most of these states are at-will employment states, so you can, they can terminate the employment contract at any time. But however, especially in our business, if, you're, if someone's giving you a professional courtesy, it, it's, it's kind of like uh, it's, it's honorable to kind of uh, accept that, uh, that professional courtesy. Uh, and so that's pretty much uh, you know, my story. And again, like I said, I'm not here to bash or trying to be a disgruntled employee, you know, because I can I can get a job anywhere. I've had the CDL since 2015. But hey, hey, uh, time is money, and your t- your time is valuable, and your time is precious. And I know what it takes to, uh, when you, especially when you first get into this business, the sacrifices that are that are made. Um, so I just want to you know, just share my experience with it. So you can make an informed decision on whether you want to work for this company or not. Do you think uh, because of the length of time you spent with the company, you, you, you think that was the reason why uh, the fleet manager uh, kind of treated you the way they did? Uh, it, it, it's, it's hard to tell. I don't, I don't really know what was going on in their heads, but one of their uh, – uh, the explanations they tried to give me that it was a business decision and they needed my truck for uh, for some drivers that were coming on. However, um, but the thing is in this business, how the, the turnover is and the retention is in this business, if it was me, you know, if I was the owner of a company, if I had a driver you know, who wanted to find a, a job somewhere else, well, I'm going to do my best to try to retain this person. And especially of this person, I've had I have no problems with. He's I had zero service failures. He's always been there on time, no accidents. It'll be a different story if this this is a person I just really just want to get rid of. He's having accidents. He's always late, and so on and so on. Small to mid-sized companies, depending on the company, because not all companies are the same. But maybe small to right. mid sized company would have would have would have probably did that. I mean, if you if you show tenacity in the work, you got there on time, you accepted your loads, you you mm-hmm. you wasn't a problem, you wasn't a problem child, they can count on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First thing of an issue that you come up that you bring up to them, it should be like, Oh, okay, well, let's see if we can help this particular driver along the way um so let's start at the beginning man you said you was a a, a trainer and a safety director at a, at a mega carrier what uh what was the reason for you to uh to bounce out of that to go over the road trucking uh you know just it's just personal reasons because because honestly I, i'm more of a you know working in the office was all fine and good but i you know i like being on the road <laughs> you know, tra- trucking is in my in my blood. It was it was, a, it was a nice little stint, but you know, I was just ready to do something different. And actually, and two, you make more, you, yeah, you make more money being on the road than you do sitting in the office. Of course, <laughs> of course. As a person that being in uh that that worked in safety with one of these mega carriers, what what is some of the stuff that you have seen uh, drivers do uh, that kind of made you say? Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot. <laughs> I've, 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 uh, yeah, I was, uh, 
Yeah, I've seen a lot. Uh, it's because one of my jobs in safety, I had to do uh, accident reviews with with drivers, and man, I've I've experienced. I actually had one driver, uh, damnedest thing I've ever experienced in my life. He had a accident, uh, a turning accident. He actually got stuck in a ditch, and they they came and pulled him out the ditch. And then he calls me back about an hour later, and he got stuck in another ditch on the other side. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what was some of the, what What was some of the harshest uh, being working in safety? I'm, I'm I'm sure. Did you have to did Did you have to do the hard thing of of letting the driver go because of a, a a safety issue? And if so, what was if you don't mind my asking, what what was the issue that you had to let him go for? Uh. Well, the, the carrier that I, I worked for, they were um, they pretty much, uh, you know, trained driver. I mean, they trained drivers straight out of driving school. They would go with a trainer for about six to eight weeks, and then, you know, they'll give them a, a job. Uh, so, you know, there, were, there was quite a few uh, accidents. And, you know, after so many accidents, you know, probably like, you know, two, three, sometimes four, uh, you know, they – they were kind of lenient, but you just had too many. They were like, hey, you know, we're just going to have to let you go. You know, and that decision wasn't really left up to me. That was really left up to the uh, the powers over me in corporate safety. And, you know, yeah, I, you know, that was one of the hardest things I had to do was, was let a let a driver go. Like I said before, I, I know what the, the commitment and the sacrifice it takes to even, you know, try to get into this career. Let me throw a scenario to you so you guys want to talk to a driver y'all y'all already know that this this particular driver is is already on the pink slip um how do you let the fleet manager know of said driver that's on the pink slip that they need to come into the terminal or or is the fleet manager is is not aware of of that driver's uh, career span when they tell them, hey, we're going to need you to come into the terminal without no explanation. Is that, when you're about to terminate a, a driver, is that is that how the conversation goes? You, you tell them that. Do you tell the fleet manager that they're going to get terminated and, oh, yeah. and not to tell them of their of their status before they get there? Uh, uh, no, no, that we wouldn't do it that way because uh, ultimately they, that, that's that fleet manager's driver and they have to be aware. And we also, you know, we would hold the fleet managers accountable uh, for these drivers too. You know, like, you know, why is this guy driving tired? Why is this guy going over his hours of service? You know, like I said, the fleet manager, basically that's, you know, that's your title. You're, you're, you're a fleet manager, driver manager, and ultimately that driver's your responsibility. And we kept them in the loop. Uh, about the uh, you know the the uh, actions of their drivers and the consequences they were going to face. Only time we would ask the fleet managers not to say anything to a driver is when we had to call them in for like a mandatory uh, uh, DOT uh, drug test or random, you know that you know because uh, by by law you're not supposed to inform uh, a driver uh, that they're going to take a of course take a uh, any type of a uh, drug test or breath alcohol testing. What's with this dishwasher, Chico? Don't you think we could have got some other space cadet to hit from Bangkok cheaper to 50 bucks? So fast forward to mm -hmm. uh to hell. Uh mm -hmm. you 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 gave them the courtesy of a two week notice. Uh, mm -hmm. and you said uh a couple of days later you received the email. You forwarded the email to me. You said uh, um they they said that the decision to accept your immediate termination was strictly a business decision based on the need of the equipment that they that you had at the time they uh wanted you mm -hmm. to go back mm -hmm. to the edinburgh texas terminal because they had four new drivers in orientation with only one truck available amongst the four wow so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you hadn't uh if you hadn't gave them that two weeks notice or even informed them that you was going to quit they brought in four new drivers only knowing that they only have one truck 
and that those other three drivers will have to wait some some time for for their trucks. How how did that kind of make you feel when uh when they say, "Hey, you 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 got an available truck. Uh hurry up and get it back to Edinburgh so we can get somebody in that seat." Yeah, I was I was like, you know, this is such a a cop out. You know, and, and the thing, too, is, you know, the, the funny part is they didn't even offer me, like, okay, you want me to go drive this truck, you know, four and a half hours down south to Texas, and you're not even offering me any pay. <laughs> because at the end of the day, I'm still the driver, you know, and I'm driving your vehicle, and so you need to pay me, you know. So they didn't even offer that. Then they wanted me to, you know, drive back with another driver, somebody I don't know. I don't know how this person drives, you know, putting my life in somebody's hands, <laughs> you know. And I, but, but basically, I, I refused to do it because the uh, the truck was actually at a uh, a drop yard, a secured facility that they they paid to have their trucks at in San Antonio. So technically, it was their property. So it isn't like it isn't like I abandoned it in an uh, alleyway or anything with about that. But 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 for that, you know, I, I you know I was ready. I was going to, you know, after my two weeks was up, I was going to take the truck down there and I was going to leave on my own dime. I was going to go to the airport and get me a rental car and come back home, you know? Wow. So where yeah. did you, so, yeah. so in other words, they wanted you to, hey, can you do us a favor and bring the truck over to Edinburgh and, and instead of offering you maybe a rental car, maybe a plane ticket, maybe, maybe a couple of dollars for a bus ticket, don't give me no bus ticket, but a couple of dollars for a nah, bus I, ticket. I wasn't gonna do no bus. <laughs> right. They, 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 they said, okay. Instead of offering you that, they say, hey, we're just gonna slap you in a truck with another driver, and he'll just drive you back up to wherever you needed to go. That 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 was is yeah, that the right, consensus right. right there? Right, but you know, and I and I told her I was and I was talking to the HR lady. I was like, look. Uh, you know, I'll, you know, I'll, you know, if you want to give me a rental car, that's fine. I'm not going to put my life in someone's hands. I don't even know. And then she tried to assure me that we only hire the best drivers and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, they can't be too true because while I was with y'all, y'all were sending out messages that you just had a rollover and you had a driver, had an accident reaching back into his refrigerator. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, come on. And I was like, you know, I will accept the rental car. She was like, well, the rental car company, you just had so many excuses in the book. The rental car company, they don't want to, you know, let go of the rental cars and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of BS to me. Uh, you know, but, you know, I I, I, I wasn't going for it. It was that old movie with, uh, where the banana and the tailpipe, you know. <laughs> wow. At, at least you at, at least you gave it you gave it your all. Uh, throughout the three months, you said right. that. You said that the money was kind of, kind of iffy at times from what they initially uh, said that you can actually make. So, what was uh, what was one of the struggle checks that or struggle settlements that you had with them? Oh, I, actually, the last one I had from them, you know, because I was having some issues with breakdown and I wasn't being compensated with that. I had two blowouts with one trailer. Um, I think I was, I was that was like a little under a thousand dollars. Um, that look at that. Let me look at that. I don't want to sit here and tell any lies. Uh, I'm gonna, I, matter of fact, I can pull that settlement right right up here right now. If you want to bear with me. Oh no no no! Um, you, you you don't have to. You you could just ballpark it. That's all. Just ballpark it. Yeah yeah yeah. It was it was, it was about a little after taxes a little a little bit under eight hundred bucks. You know, and, and let me tell you something else, too. You know, uh, you know, I'm pretty good at managing my time. You know, I'll even run on recap hours. I'm, I don't really require a 34-hour reset, you know. Uh, but, you know, if you're running like that, and, and the experienced guys, you will know what I'm talking about, you should be making money, you know, especially when you're out on the road, you know, you know two, three, four weeks at a time. You know, you're running on recap hours. I was barely making any money even running that way. So just kind of give you an indication without what, what I was going through, uh, especially you know dealing with their uh, their shippers and their receivers time wise. I mean they would pay the pension pay, but you know come on the, the pension pay is just just pretty much a welfare check for drivers. You know <laughs> you make more money just rolling rather than sitting at a shipper or a receiver. 
Wow. All right. Well, hell, uh, they they are located out of out, out of Texas, though, right? Well, they 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 have uh, they they have uh, they they're running they have operations out of Texas, but they're originally their their home office is in uh, Akron, Iowa. Oh, that's wait, wait, wait. Hell is an Ohio based company. I didn't realize that. And I did to make the call on them. Too. No, they're no, they're 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 in Iowa. Akron, oh, Akron, Iowa. 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 OK, yeah. Iowa based company. Right. OK, 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 OK. That's what's up. Hell. All right. right. Uh, well, let and they're, me... and they're, they're about a mid-sized company. Yeah, they have about I think about five, five hundred and fifty trucks. And I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, share your story with me, man. Uh, would you? Would I mean, despite what happened to you, would would you still consider if somebody asked you, uh, what, what, "Hey, is hell is a good company for me?" Would you would you suggest them to anybody? I could not honestly give hell a good recommendation, and you know I wouldn't suggest them uh, to anyone because I I, I, I kind of feel like if they can do that to me, that but that experience is just won't be unique to me. It'll probably happen to someone else. All right, all right. What would be your what would be your um what would be your advice for because a lot of new drivers listen to my channel. Uh what would be your advice to uh to new drivers that are that are coming into the industry uh and they're looking to get with any company? What what would be your advice to them? Well, you know, we live in an age of, of reviews. You know, you go and buy a hamburger, you can review, you know, your experiences. Uh, I, you, if you, and, uh, probably a lot of people these days kind of look at reviews before they, you know, get into most things and most careers. What I suggest that you do is kind of look at the good reviews of a company with a jaded eye, because those are probably, you know, uh, I'm sad to say it, it probably happens. I'm not saying it happens, but it's a possibility that these are probably, uh, you know, they're probably getting employees to make good reviews or even, you know, giving them some type of incentive to make a good reviews. You really need to pay attention to the negative reviews uh, about a company before you want, you know, you want to dig in a little deeper, uh, you know, and ask a lot of questions, ask a lot of questions. Jesus Christ. Mister, you okay in there? Oh, oh, oh. You all right? Do you want oh. from me, you fucking cocksucker? Asking questions is like a double-edged sword. I asked a lot of questions right. in the last MTC that just right. popped up this morning. And uh, uh -huh. the recruiter guy, if, if I was to say that, kind of got in his feelings because I was questioning some of the some of the stuff that he was saying what do you say to what do you what do you say to the the recruiters that get in their own feelings about us drivers calling there just to just to get information about the company what what, what do you say to recruiters that be that be talking reckless to us well, well recruiters only got one job to do that's to get drivers in there you know that's that's how they make their their money um, you know, if, if a recruiter can't be straight up with you, you probably don't need to work for that company anyway, because the recruiter is going to basically tell you anything just to get you in the door. You know, and what I would do, I would go and talk to other drivers. And that's how I got on with the company that I am now. I didn't, uh, I actually talked to one of their drivers and we had a real lengthy, uh, conversation, you know, cause nobody knows better, uh, the inside workings of a company than the uh, person that works for them. So that, I would suggest that, uh, you know, you do that. Uh, if you're going to ask questions, ask it to a, a driver of their company. All right. All right. Michael, man, well, thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate you coming on. I I appreciate you uh, being a supporter of the channel, man. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, I like what you do. I've seen, I've seen a few of your podcasts, I, I, I like your work. I appreciate you. The run, the go, the pack of tequila, I mix it all up and I swear that I need none of them. My pocket is a banana, but I'm a wild man. My mind is a banana, but I'm a banana.